there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Hello everyone and welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve, and tonight we'll be discussing episode three of season one of Happy. Yeah, wow. Wow. All right, since we're doing it so early, we don't have any ratings yet, right? Right. Okay. And early, I just mean in the day. Yeah. (laughs) So let's jump into when Christmas was Christmas, Sax journeys through a dark past while he and Happy track his daughter. Mary and Amanda make a chilling discovery. Very bad Santa coerces information out of Haley about her dad. So there's a lot of questions I have, mostly about the Santa part. Right. So so as we go, I'm just going to ask you questions. (laughs) Okay. So let's start with, again, we're kind of right back where we were. Happy and Nick driving, but they're stuck on a bridge in traffic. Of course, Happy was also acting like a siren that nobody else can hear. Right. (laughs) That would have got like real old real fast i'll tell you that yes that got on nick's nerves very quickly and he goes about informing happy of that fact that he's just too damn happy (laughs) oh and then happy is all like well you should have used google maps you would have known not to go this way and he just loves the word google right oh man i think nick was like are you serious this this thing is telling me to use google maps okay and well, Nick being Nick, it's, decides to get out of the car so he can take a leak. Yeah. Okay, that's so classy. Yeah, with the car behind him, with the child that sees this, and the parents cover the child's eyes. Yeah, I was like, what is happening? Oh, my gosh. So you have a flashback, though. Yes. And this is where I think things are starting to really kind of come out, like to see right. Nick's attitude. Yes. It's a domestic abuse call, and we find out that the accused is a lawyer with connections, which that never sounds good. Who is he connected no, with? The mob, just the higher-ups, yeah. a little of both. Right, yes. A, a very rich client, to say the least, because he basically threatens Nick that he'll take it, have his badge in no time. That's why I'm like, that could be just somebody higher up. Right. But Nick is like, okay, do I do the right thing or do I follow the letter of the law? Right. And who's going to be a good cop and who's bad cop? And so we see a very conflicted Nick in this flashback as to what he really should be doing in this situation. Now, this is the third time that they've been called out to this location. And apparently, you know, the lawyer goes on that, yeah, this was just a a, a shack up, a, a place to keep his on the side. And she ends up somehow getting pregnant when she wasn't supposed to be able to. And the baby's always crying and getting on this guy's nerves like nothing else. Yeah. So, you know, this is not going to end well for anybody. No, and this is where I started feeling like this episode is going to go real dark real fast. Yes, and but this may be the thing that basically breaks Nick. Mm-hmm. I can see that just completely tearing somebody apart. Yes. So we come back to the future or present. What? Wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different show. Yeah. And you have Nick like, all right, happy. Where's Haley at? He's like, I don't remember. All right, what does the guy look like? Um, I can't really remember. He's like, all right, we're going to go to a sketch artist. And he used to work for the forest. We got this. We got this. He's really good. So he's like, what does he look like? So he he's talking to Happy, trying to tell 
the sketch artist whose name is Emil. And Emil, uh, well, he's gone a little kooky. Yeah. So honestly, I thought he was going to be able to hear Happy himself. But it turns out, basically, the description is Santa Claus. Right. And you go, oh, this is not helping any. It's like, yeah, maybe give me a little more, like, I don't know, crazy eyes, something. So, yeah, Emil was definitely of a few screws missing, and it really would have helped if Happy would have been able to, you know, describe his his wild hair and the, the jacket had lights on it, just the beard wasn't white, right. anything that would have help get a, a better description of it right. of this guy and but mostly so he was have... looking at his butt because he was yeah. like hiding so i mean maybe just because he couldn't see him straight on very well yeah could be but we don't even really get a chance to discuss it because we go to another flashback yeah and more of nick's backside yeah I, i'm telling you he had to write this into his contract you gotta be able to see my butt at least once every episode and apparently, Nick is not much of a talker. No. And Mary seems a little frustrated with that. And it's like he's getting out his frustrations, and she's, like, trying to connect with them. And he's like, yeah, whatever. This isn't what right. that's about. Yes. this We definitely see that Nick, in this episode, that Nick has a very difficult time talking about what's going on and how he's feeling about it. Not only with Amanda, but also with Mary. Yeah, which is why I think they our... should have some counseling. I don't know. Right. This is our great character flaw right here. Communication, he yes. Can't get his, yeah, communication and getting his feelings out is not something that he is able to at all, not even slightly. The sex is, gets the frustrations out to a certain degree, but it's still not enough because you aren't discussing it at least coming to some kind of internal resolution with what's going on. Right. And I'm just wondering, who gets, like, completely naked for a quickie in a closet? Random thought. Yeah. At work, no less. Right. So let's jump back to Amanda and Mary, who Amanda's is locked up. She's in cuffs and sitting there, and Mary comes in with a nice little mark on her face. Right. And... Where she got in. <laughs> she, uh... Drop some knowledge on Amanda. It's like, all right, well, apparently, the guy who brought you your card likes to do arts and crafts, and he's leaving cards at every victim's house. Right. And another little girl's gone missing and hasn't received a card yet. So, okay, let's team up. Maybe it took getting hit in the face for Mary to realize, okay, this is serious, but she kind of had her own little light bulb moment because she's like, is Haley Sack's kid? Right. And maybe she's like, all right, this is just another way for me to get at Nick and get him where I need to go to save my mom. Exactly. So she, yeah. That was the light bulb was, yes, if Haley is Nick's child, then she may be able, that another thing she may be able to use to get Nick to blue. Right. Yeah. As long as she can find Haley before Nick does. Yeah. And she actually takes Amanda out of the cuffs, which is weird because- Right. I didn't think she was going to. saying, we're going and we're going to go do this. So So we go back. Interesting to see how they they communicated with each other. And I'm not sure Amanda was 100% on board with having to do this with Mary, but I guess it's better than nothing. I don't know. I thought she was kind of like, all right, I'll help because if nothing else, she can find the guy. Right. Well, I don't know. We'll see. So we yeah, the have... The motivations of two women were definitely different. <laughs> yeah, we have them on, like, two different ends of the spectrum as to what their ultimate goals are. But right. ultimately, they're going to come together, but it's not for, yeah, the right reasons, basically. At least yeah. not on Mary's <laughs> part. Can we say Nick really can't drive? Like, oh, absolutely, <laughs> and Happy told him so. <laughs> yes, and it was kind of funny because when we were tweeting this out, there's a um a, a Twitter account that's Nick Sachs, and I don't know if it was you or I that had tweeted out about he really can't drive. He's like, oh, I disagree completely. Look how much traffic we've avoided. Right. 
<laughs> so whoever is doing that account, yeah, I, I think that's was, awesome. Right. I think it's probably one of the writers, if I had to guess. It was fun. It just reading some of the stuff. They seem to know too much about the character than a normal fan would, unless the fan was diehard comic and knew the story and everything. Uh, possibly. But, yeah, whoever is doing that, if you're listening, that was it's really fun just reading some of your tweets. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, he decides to go too fast and then gets trailed by some cops. And then, oh, he happens to flip his car and still walks away. Yes. How? <laughs> Seriously. I, I I don't understand. Is he like a cat? Nine right. lives? Yeah, I think so. Or he just stays sedated so much that when things happen, they don't hurt him as bad. Maybe. One of the two. I don't know. <laughs> but Nick has has an idea. And then suddenly we have a weird shining moment. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? And it turns out it's his prostitute insider. And she right, is pissed. The other Amanda. She's pissed. She's like, you know what? How many times are you going to interrupt stuff? Okay, now the first time he interrupted, she almost died. And uh, she, right. actually, she almost died by being used as a setup. Multiple times <laughs> that night. <laughs> But seriously, you're all upset because you're not getting paid? Well, he paid her, and she's like, go to the North Pole. After she's, she sees the picture of Santa, and I'm like, wow, that was real informative. Except we find out the North right. Pole is a strip club. It's like, oh, that's not creepy at all. No, not at all. I wonder if these places exist. Would not surprise me <laughs> Not New York City. Yeah. <laughs> so we get... Flashback number three, where we see Amanda is having an ultrasound done and discovers she is pregnant. Yeah, I love it. Are you sure? Well, you yeah. see what's <laughs> happening. It's not like they're faking this on the screen for you. Yeah, six or seven weeks along. Right. So, of course, she heads to the station to talk to Nick. And, of course, he's still bent out of shape about having to deal with this domestic abuse case. He does promise to talk to her that, that night, but he also kind of blows her off. Lets it, yeah, blows her off for his partner as they both share a bite from an apple. And you go, you're not trying to hide this possible uh, closeness, this fling with your partner, are you? <laughs> this over close. Now, like, I'll share food with people. But right. I'm not going to share an apple, like, where I'm biting it and then somebody else is biting it. But even with my husband, that's a little right. iffy. Like, yeah. maybe a taffy apple, but that's iffy. Be like, no, don't bite the other side. And I've <laughs> yeah. been with them for a exactly. really long time. So, like, I, I don't see, yeah, I don't see that happening. But maybe that's just me. Right. Let's go to the North Pole, shall we? All right. Uh. Yeah, they walk into the North Pole and... There are nothing but all these make-believe Santas that go there to make-believe they're not depressed and sex-deprived anymore. Yeah, there's like all the pervy ones. Happy is so bright-eyed, just in amazement at this place. Yeah, I I was just like, okay, seriously? Because Nick's sitting there, and he, of course, is trying to get information. Well, that doesn't work, so he gets at least some alcohol. So he can lubricate yeah. himself. And he just starts eating some of the fruit out of, like, the little bar thing. And Happy's like, oh, you can have all the cherries you want. <laughs> and I love it because Nick looks at me, he's like, do you eat? He's like, I pretend to. As he's, like, super excited looking at the cherries. And he's like, okay, this is weird. Because yeah. everything else that's happening isn't, right? Yes. As we cut to our... Very bad Santa, who isn't at the North Pole. He's busy fetting Haley. I was freaking out because he's just taking her somewhere, and she's like, where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? And then he, like, ties her to a chair, and I'm like, oh, my God, what is he doing? Right. And then a huge table. He brings her down some fruitcake to try to get her to eat. She refuses. But then he eats it. Right. And I was assuming, like, he's really just like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and he's eating it to be like, see, it's not poison, but I'm like, but he just poured her some tea, too. Yes. And all of a sudden, he starts talking to her in that little boy voice. And 
for whatever reason, because he's like, as he eats the cake and then talks to her like that, and he's like, tell me more about how your daddy's going to save you and going to take me to jail. And all of a sudden, she eats the cake, which I don't understand. Right. Yeah, that was, I think that when Haley heard the voice coming out of him, it completely just freaked her out. And because he wanted her to eat the cake, that was the thing that she thought would make him stop doing that because she didn't want to hear him talking that way anymore because it's him and not another child. Oh, okay. It was like, please stop, please stop, please stop. See, I'm eating the fruitcake. Oh, okay. And then when he's just talking to me and, you know, she's like, my daddy's going to save me and he's going to take you to jail. And he's like, I want to meet your daddy. It's like, so does, because he says something like, yeah, I want him to. So does he actually want to get caught? That's what I was not understanding. Well, I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Okay. I really think he was just saying that because he wanted to get at the cops. Okay. I really have a feeling here in a little bit we'll find out what his story actually is. And I believe he probably felt that his father did what he did because the cops were about to arrest him. So he blames all cops for what happened to his life. And as soon as she said he was a hero, well, he equated hero to cop. And that's why he's been digging to find out more about her father. Okay. Speaking of parents, Uh. Amanda Meredith visit the latest missing girl's parents looking for information. And... It's sad when they're having this conversation because Amanda yes. decides to w- weirdly take point on this because yeah. she can tell that Meredith is not a parent. Right. She's like trying to tell him, you know, it's nobody's fault. Don't worry about it. They'll find her, blah, blah, blah. And then they turn around and say something to her about Haley. And she right. gets a little choked up, so she excuses herself to the bathroom. And while she's up there, she hears something. But she kind of goes and looks at the little girl's room. And you see that weird little, like, creature thing right. on the bed, which is whatever it is that Haley's really into. It's almost yes. Teletubby-ish thingies. Yes. Then she hears another noise, and she opens the closet, which, that closet was, like, teeny tiny. I'm like, Very. And, and that just made me suspicious. And then yes, she hears another absolutely. noise, and she moves stuff, and there's a door, or there's a stairwell behind the fake wall. She goes upstairs. Right, yeah, she noticed the fake wall first. Yeah, so she goes upstairs. It's like, okay, this is weird. And she, thankfully, and you don't see this often, pulls out her phone and actually turns on the flashlight feature. Because normally everybody's right. trying to just use the front, like, display. And then right. you see, like, these, this contraption of, like, it was, like, hooks and wires. And I'm like, it looks like a dog run almost. And right. then suddenly. It actually did. There was, like. A little girl, and she screams. I was pissed. Yes. Because it turns out that's the little girl. Their little girl. They had her upstairs, like, tied up and shit. Yeah. I was so pissed. (laughs) Because, and I was tweeting this, like, furiously. And I'm like, how could somebody do this? Yes. Absolutely. Made no sense at all. And actually, Mary says to her that, you know, maybe they just wanted the attention. But still, it's like, right. that's that's messed up that you would do that to your kid. But then it gets even yes, worse. it is. Because then we have a, the final flashback. Yes. Yeah, Nick and Meredith are called back to the house of the high-profile lawyer. And he's been known for some pretty bad stuff, but nothing quite this bad. Because as they enter the house, they see him on the couch. He's got some blood on him. They start searching the house. The girlfriend's dead. And Nick goes into the kitchen and sees blood on the microwave. I was so, so pissed. I was like, I had no words. Yeah, no, that, that, that was even further than I expected them to go with this story. Yes, killing a baby is bad enough, but to just microwave them, come on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that got a whole bunch of OMGs on Twitter, that's for sure. Yeah, and I had actually, well, it wasn't right here, but it was a little while later, because Nick takes the guy out, outside, like, 
beats his ass up and down the stairs, and I think he busted his teeth out on the stairs outside. Right. And Meredith just lights up a cigarette, because what are you going to do? First of all, do you think you would be able to pull him off? Oh, hell no! And second... He's lost it right there. That was... That was Nick's breaking point right right there. Right. And then second, do you even want to after you've seen that? Oh, hell no. You want justice right then and there. I was just, like, devastated. And then you have him at home and talking to his wife. And she, you know. Well, first he makes some popcorn. Oh. And, oh, my God, that was horrible to even watch him watch the popcorn bag get big. Because you just see the emotions on his face, too. Right. And, yeah, so she's like, well, what do you think if we put another stocking up by the fireplace? And he has, like, kind of a meltdown. Yes, he does. Complete meltdown. And uh, this is when I tweeted out. I'm like, it it really makes me wonder how you have, and actually, uh, I'll tell you something in a second, have that separation. If you're in that kind of line of work, if you're a police officer, who deals in, like, sex crimes or children's crimes like this. How are you able to separate that from your right. own your own There's real life? life. And yes. my father-in-law is actually a retired police officer who worked in sex crimes. Right. And I had asked him that one time, and I asked my professors, because I have a criminal justice degree, the same thing, because they were all, you know, real-life cops. I'm like, how do you separate what happens from your real life? And a lot of them say it's really hard and you, like, when they had a really bad day, and my mother-in-law said this too, when you, you always knew when something right. horrible happened because you would come home and, like, really start playing with the kids. Right. Like, hugging them and doing anything they wanted to play. You want to go outside and play? We'll go play baseball outside. It's 8 o'clock at night. That's fine. We'll go throw the ball, whatever. Like, you, right. they grab on to, like, their good and pure moments in their real life. To try to make it not so bad. Right. But I, I seen that and I'm like, it's one of those things like, you know, exists and you know, people are out there, shitty people that do these right. horrible things that we unfortunately see in the news all the time to their kids. And you wonder how the people who go in are able to deal with it because I don't think I would be able to, even though my ultimate no. goal was to become a lawyer. You always have that possibility that you would have to defend somebody at some point. I don't think I could. No. That's why I I was going to try to become an advocate. And I'm like, I don't think I can become a child advocate either. Because seeing something like this, which is obviously what we're hoping is super extreme. Right. Like, I don't think I would be able to deal with it without, like, breaking down in tears. Yeah. And so when he just beat the living shit out of that lawyer. I was cheering. And yes. I'm like, I feel like this makes me a bad person because I was so happy that he was doing this. No, not at all. So Everybody was. Yeah. And it's like, holy crap. And then you just see, like, everything in him just kind of break. Right. Tells Amanda, why would he want to bring a pure and innocent child into the world like this today? And takes his drink and throws it into the fireplace and just walks off. And I'm wondering if that's the moment where he totally left and just. I think so. I think he he left the left Amanda right there and didn't look back. So he really doesn't know for sure that he is a father. Okay, I can see that then. Like you right. know, maybe she was just talking about wanting to have kids. Right, and he wasn't going to have any part of that. It wasn't. Oh, I'm pregnant, and we're going to have a kid. It was. Oh, would you like to be able to put a stock another stocking on the right. man? Yeah, so it was a heart-wrenching moment just overall with that flashback. Right, it really was. So we come back to the now, and it's, like, not exactly better. No. <laughs> As first we see Nick has been moved upstairs because of him causing so much trouble downstairs with the patrons, and he's getting a lap dance, and does get some information that he needs to talk with Mrs. Claus. <laughs> it's like, Or shall what? we call her Madam Claus? Because <laughs> she's older than dirt. Yes. But he does get a sit down with her, and we start to get some really good information. Which was really weird information, though. Yes, it was. She remembers a, a real Santa way back when, 
who happened to be the big shot of all the department store Santa rackets. Yes. We had like that mannequin moment where everybody's like frozen. Right. And she's telling this story. And it turns out that apparently he was a little too into kids. Yes, just a little bit. (sighs) And as the police were closing in on him, he hung himself. And then Nick's like, that doesn't help me if he's dead. She's like, not him, his kid. He went to a mental institution. We don't know what happened. It's like, maybe you start with that. Exactly. (laughs) Or bring it up before, like, yeah, he he died. And what difference does this make? Right. Oh, she had to embellish the story. Yeah, thanks for creeping me out on all sorts of levels. Appreciate it. Yeah. (laughs) Too much cleavage, that's for sure. (laughs) Uh, we go back to our very bad Santa, who we now find out did actually drug Haley. Yes, with what we have no clue, but she definitely was definitely drugged because he's pushing the snow globe into her face and telling her to see and see. And next thing we know, we see the shot of Haley in her bed with the laptop looking at that one picture which i was confused here too right did he take her back because we see them walking away did he take her back to her home so she can show him the picture of her dad it sure looked that way i don't think he could have gotten that information out of her in a drug-induced state to where he would know what nick looked like like he did Mm -hmm. because right after that nick goes outside the north pole to Relieve himself again. I don't know why. Well, I guess I do know why he wouldn't want to do it. Inside. I was like, are there not bathrooms in there? I oh, I'm sure there are, but I'm sure that not very sanitary. But Oh, the alley's better? Uh, yeah, Nick isn't one known for uh, <laughs> being very sanitary anyway. Yeah. And out of nowhere, BSB a taxi. And this dude apparently is like hella strong. Yeah, Bigfoot. Now, at one point, though, earlier in the episode, Happy does tell him that he smelled like plastic burning but sweet. And Nick's right. like, I know that smell. Meth. That's meth. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, is this guy all like methed out or something and like super strong? Right. I believe so. So maybe that's why he was out. And man, he just like let loose on him. Right. And what stopped him, though, is Happy because all of a sudden he's like, I can see you. Right. And I think Happy and I were both the same. We were like, what the hell? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that stopped him, and he actually snags Happy. So you go, hmm, are we going to be in a double hostage situation now where both Happy and Haley are locked up by our bad Santa? Hmm. How's he going to keep him? I don't know. This is weird. Put him in a box. Yeah, that's true. So, that was this, this episode. We, Nick got his ass handed to him. And we don't know where Haley is right now. If she's back at home, because she was in her room then. That's what I didn't understand. So, right. I don't know. And it was like, how would very bad Santa know to look at the North Pole to look for Nick? Unless he just figured that that's eventually where Nick would show up to start looking for him. Maybe. It's weird. Yeah, it was very weird how he happened to be there when Nick stepped out of the building. Well. That's for sure. We hope you're enjoying the show, both ours and Happy on (laughs) Sci-Fi. So please rate and review us on iTunes and all the other podcatchers you're finding us on. And good ratings and reviews, you know, always help other fans of the show find us. Tell your friends we do. Hope you're also visiting our website, www.fangirlzone.com. Check out all the other shows that we have there if you're not listening to them. And the little articles we have up, it has our links to our emails, because we do want to hear your thoughts on this. We ask you to send it to sci-fi talk at fangirlzone.com. You can check out our Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and our Redbubble store that has our logos on it, which is super awesome. And I'm so happy that we look so cool. And of course, you know, there's all the other links if you feel like shopping. But that being said, for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk, I am Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve. These must be the magic carrots that make reindeer fly. No. No, they're not. No. Until next time.